guys, so welcome back to another episode of Fatal Film on Friday. In today's case, we're going to be talking about uh, the tragic young case of a woman who was killed too soon over a photo bomb. So yeah, just like the title says, um, actually this is a pretty long story, so let's just go and get started. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my mind. Um, so instead of starting off with our killer, like I normally do, in this case, we're actually going to start with our victim, since there's more information about her than it is regarding them. Annie Hung Pham, which went by Kim, she was born September 16th, 1990, so her birthday would have been not too long ago, I think about two weeks ago, because I'm recording this October 4th, to Dung and Teresa Pham. When she was one years old in November of 1991, her family would actually move to the United States, so they came from Vietnam. Both of her parents had actually worked as tax accountants. Um, Kim actually had an older sister, sorry, an older brother named Andy, who was around 11 at the time. It doesn't give it an exact year, but apparently the older brother was like 11. And so they, his family decides to up and move to LA to, to do night school to like learn English since they're now in the States. And sadly, when Kim's mother was five, she died from breast cancer, which that will come later into the story. And apparently, while out buying a minivan for his new family, because um, Kim's father is now a wi widow, he bumps into a single mom with four kids. Damn! Tram Nacy Dome. And so about three months later, they get married. And so that would make Kim the youngest of all the kids. So Dung's biological kids, her kids, combined together. And apparently, she was the youngest at like age eight. So there was Jason at 17, Ken at 12, Katie at 10, and Lisa at 9. Those are Tram's biological children. And so when Kim was like 18, she would get charged with a DUI as a misdemeanor. In her last three years of life, she would actually get charged with seven other traffic infractions. Damn! But none, none of those were involved in a DUI. And so in her free time... Um, as an adult, she would spread awareness and raise money for breast cancer because remember her mom had died of breast cancer and apparently, obviously, losing your mother at such a young age, that was a big impact. So that's why she does that. Uh, she actually graduated from Chapman University. She was aiming to be a journalist with some of her work already being online. So if you look really hard, you could actually find it. And of course, I did. She said that she got married January 31st, 2014. So basically, on January 28th, Kim basically was um, staying in for the night. And then apparently we decided to go out last minute. And so on January 18th, late that night, apparently she was outside a nightclub waiting with eight, 11 other friends. Damn! But at the time, same time that they were waiting outside the club, Candace Marie Brito and Vanessa Tapa Navalo were walking out. And a woman only known as Amelia and two men were leaving. Candace was born on June 22nd, 1988. And... Vanessa was born on November 30th, 1986. The two groups would actually eventually bump into each other and they would attack Kim according to her friend's testimony. This was apparently because Kim or had accidentally photo bombed a picture taken by them and that was according to a statement made by Amelia. And so apparently, um, according to what I can find, apparently Kim like swung the first swing, or whatever, the first swing, first punch, whatever you want to call it. And that would end up hitting Vanessa. And so of course that ends up starting the fight. Multiple people ended up like jumping on Kim without even trying to stop the fight. Eventually, Vanessa and Candace would end up leaving, like fleeing, fleeing the scene. As you can imagine, um, Kim was sadly ended up dying, ended up passing away in hospital after being taken off life support. Uh, the main reason she pretty much was on life support, despite her being brain dead, was to save her organs because she was an organ donor and she always wanted her organs to be donated to people. So her heart, kidney, lungs pancreas and liver were donated and they saved like five lives so each organ went to a different person if that makes sense her being an organ donor that inspired her stepsister katie and her father to become organ donors themselves um so of course with kim now dead is technically considered murder so businesses the nearby businesses so like the crosby which is the nightclub they were at by the way and other nearby places were like we got five grand for anyone who has information to like come forward regarding what happened and so the city would match it making it like 10k and then orange county crime stoppers where apparently this happened in that county 
they added another thousand. So now we're at like 11,000, right? So then when her autopsy was done, she died from blunt force trauma, but it was unable to see if it was like just one, like one fatal blow that killed her or if it was like multiple different blows and she just died over a period of time. And so Kim would end up being buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park along with her mother. Because remember her mother died when she was like five. So apparently her mother was buried in that same cemetery. Uh, Chapman University had apparently sent her diploma to the family for her bachelor's degree in psychology. Vanessa would somehow be caught the next day due, I think it's like due to the, the video of the fight. Which apparently is very blurry so I don't know how exactly they found her but I'm glad they did. So she's charged, she's held in with like $1 million bail. Uh, Candace would have be arrested somehow, but it never, it never exactly says, from what I can find at least, how Candace was arrested, but Candace is arrested too. And on fast forward to about the one year anniversary of the murders, about January 2015, family and friends gathered together for a visual, as you would expect. The Crosby apparently is renamed the North Left. I don't know if it was because of that incident or just coincidence. Kim would actually be included in a memorial by artist Federico Medina. An undercover cop would actually go into the same jail cell as Van Vanessa, apparently, getting her to confess to her part of the crime. Gotcha, bitch! But you'll see, like, maybe two sources regarding that, but apparently that happened, too. So then, of course, in the recording, she would say that, oh, Kim threw the first punch despite witnesses and apparently even video camera somehow caught of the altercation before the actual fight. Apparently, they said different. But she claims that Kim threw the first punch. During the trial, the jurors, obviously, they watched the video of the of um, of um Kim getting beat, basically, like, repeatedly, apparently. Um, Candace's attorney with... C Candace had an attorney who basically said that Kim had started a fight with Amelia. Remember the Amelia from earlier? But it wasn't proven if Candace had kicked Kim. Vanessa's attorney, Candace Reed, would say that his client didn't kick Kim and that the blows from other people may have been what killed her. So that basically the wrong person's in jail. Because apparently there were multiple people kicking her, which from the video, despite how blurry it is, it does look like more than two people. And so Candace and Vanessa were found guilty of all time manslaughter and assault. They both faced the possibility of 11 years, but were acquitted of second degree murder. Because you know, second degree murder, that's obviously the more serious charge. Bullshit. Bullshit. How... Despite the brutal death that she suffered, 11 years is the maximum they can get. And so despite 11 years seem like a, a light sentence to you and me, the family was like, we'll literally take whatever we can get. So give them the maximum sentence. So the prosecutor, obviously trying to get uh, these two in jail, they actually said that Kim was the one who took... Kim was actually the one who was taking photos, but someone bumped into her. And so that's what resulted in, in the fight, like, starting. Um... So, of course, however, Kansas' attorney was like, um, well, they didn't intend to kill her, so they shouldn't face murder charges. Really, nigga? And so he would also claim that um, Kim's friends were actually, like, gang members and that they were just defending themselves. And so a witness would come by, a witness would actually come in later who just happened to be Amelia's boyfriend, and he would say that Kim beat Amelia up and that he actually tried to save her, but somehow it failed. Uh, however, though, somehow he was beat up by Kim's eight male friends. Apparently, I thought they were mostly, if not all female, but apparently they were mostly male of the 11 other people that were there that night. And then while running away, they he said that they allegedly said that they knew where he was at. And then they said the name of their gang, which apparently he didn't recognize. They would both end up only having to serve six years, both having to pay five $5,000 fines and having to help with funeral costs which both of their fees that they had to help pay for her funeral added up to about $3,500. And so that Amelia woman that I keep mentioning over and over again, she never ends up getting charged with anything. And so, of course, one thing about Vanessa, and Vanessa apparently is the mother at the time to a four-year-old. Despite being a, a mother to a four-year-old, four years old at the time this happened, she could not understand that the pain that um, Annie's father was going through when he lost Annie. So yeah, that was a very tragic case of the death of Annie Kim Pham. I hope you guys learned something new. And remember, if someone photobombs you, it's not that serious. I love you guys. Like, subscribe, leave your case recommendations down below. And I will see you fail from this the next one. Bye. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something.
Silhouettes of you are like a taunt Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain of